Hey everyone, what is going on? It is Brian and we are back. And today we are taking a look at a video that is going to teach you how to read a bottle of Four Roses bourbon. Now over the last months and weeks and even days in some regards with polls that we've done on Patreon or over on our Entry Proof Lives that we've done on Thursday nights, we've gotten a ton of people saying they want more Four Roses content. And we talked on the last live stream just about some of the absence of chatter about Four Roses and some of the things that we think are the culprit because of that. Some of their mainstay products that are on the shelves aren't necessarily the best showcase of what Four Roses can do. And I think a lot of Four Roses drinkers would probably tell you the same. And if they're not, we know that what they normally would go to to drink are probably some of the single barrel, barrel strength selections like you see here, or the limited edition barrels. Now, I think we all probably know, or if you don't know, and you have or have not noticed it in your market, these are very hard to come by, and the limited editions every year, even harder to come by. So it's tricky when the best representation of what this brand does for a lot of people is unobtainable. But for those who do have picks that drop in their market, or they have picked up a single barrel heel here or there, but they don't exactly know what it means or how to break it down, we're gonna talk about it in this video. Now, I will leave some information in the sides above me as they see fit and talking about the recipes and talking about the breakdowns of the, the warehousing information. But I think one of the things that is the very beginning that we'll talk about with Four Roses, as we talk about what other distilleries can do, some of them have different recipes that they use, different bourbon recipes from one another with maybe a different rye percentage they might do a weeded recipe, they might do a rye product, and these are all different recipes that, that cause them to have to you know, do a cleaning process in order to put in you know, a new batch, per se. Some distilleries make a lot of different brands out of using a single mash bill, and so they're able to continue to churn this product, and it goes to different places in the end. With Four Roses, they do run two different rye, corn barley recipes. They have 60% corn, 35% rye, and 5% malted barley. And then they have one that is 75% corn, 20% rye, 5% malted barley. So their base does start off in two different ways when it goes to the rye. Now, one of the things that I feel like is said when you go on distillery tours is you find somebody always seem to tell you, we've got this proprietary yeast, and it's that proprietary yeast that gives us our unique flavor. And that's true in a lot of cases, but when it comes to Four Roses, they actually use five different yeast strains. And it's with those two rye uh, percentage recipes, 35% and 20%, in combination with the five different yeast strains, that Four Roses actually runs 10 different mash bills. Again, that information is gonna be up here and about the breakdown of what those specific flavors will provide at those recipes. Now, that is not always going to necessarily be the case. As we have learned when it comes to single barrel products, every barrel is gonna be unique. Even if it's next to a barrel that tastes one way, it doesn't mean that what you're gonna taste is gonna be similar to that barrel. So what I feel like is very common when it comes to Four Roses is there's a lot of people that want to try every single recipe. They want to collect one of every barrel. And there's merit to doing that. But one of the things I want to challenge people with is that there's also no difference when it comes to that as someone who wants to take one particular recipe and try it at eight years, at nine years, at 10 years, 12 years, something like that. Or somebody who just sticks with one recipe Maybe even one uh, warehouse and barrel run information, we'll get into that in just a second, and continue to find barrels because you'll find varying flavor profiles that same way. Now, it can be a little bit similar if anyone is familiar with Willet. When it comes to Willet, they have a bunch of different recipes, a couple of different bourbon recipes, they have uh, some with rye, they've got a couple of different rye recipes and they've got a weeded profile, and then they have a whole bunch of stuff that's aged stock. But when it comes to trying to identify what you're drinking, Willet Family Estate bottles pretty much just go by a number. And so every number, you know, you might go after numbers that are similar to one another. There might be a certain quote unquote run that you figured out, 
but otherwise it's kind of a guessing game. And I would say that Four Roses is a little bit like that, but some of the mystery is taken away. Let's go ahead and jump quickly to the side, I'll try and show a graphic a little bit closer up that can give you some of that information. Now, generally it's gonna give you some of the store information that's on there. Maybe or maybe not, it will give you around the season or month of which that was selected. But it, what it's definitely gonna probably give you is the age information, how old is the product in this bottle, and then the recipe right here. We talked about those recipes and also these tags. Go ahead and break down what you're generally gonna get from those recipes. That's the same information you're seeing from the bubble up here. And then also I'll leave a link down below if you wanna dig into some more digested reading for that. But what we wanna talk about is identifying the front of this barrel. If we were able to see the age on the side and we're able to see the recipe. Now what I hope for you all, if you're ever, you're ever given the chance, like I mentioned, trying one of all 10 recipes is fine, but I don't know that's necessarily gonna let you all know if that's a recipe that you do or don't like. I've had OASVs that have been really fruity and some OASVs that have been leathery and vanilla and spicy. And so I feel like you won't necessarily always get the case. They're single barrel products, we should expect that. So let's go ahead and talk about the information you'll find on the front of a bottle here. And I'll hopefully have a graphic that will run into some of this information so I don't always have to hold this bottle up here. But the first thing that you're gonna run into is the alcohol percentage. Now, pretty straightforward. It's gonna tell you percentage of alcohol this bottle is proof-wise. I feel like I'm gonna stop real quick here and say Four Roses warehouses, they are single story warehouses. You'll see a lot of distilleries that have floor after floor after floor after floor of their rick houses. Again, if you go on the tours or you read information about them, they're probably telling you down towards the bottom, the temperature doesn't change all that much. And so you get some nice balanced flavors out of that. Up towards the top, you have a lot more differentiating, differentiating temperatures between hot and cold, and that's going to have more expansion in the barrel and has more extremities that you might be able to get not only for the seasons, evaporation loss, higher alcohol percentages, and then that usually will do some sort of impact to the flavor. Now, with Four Roses, we still have six tiers that make up the single story warehouses, but it's their philosophy that in the single story warehouses, you have less fluctuation from top to bottom and thus a much more consistent product overall. That's why I would say when it comes to tiers, when it comes to bottles, uh, when, even when it comes to the 10 different recipes, a lot of times I think Four Roses still tastes like Four Roses. There's a profile about it that just tastes like Four Roses no matter what recipe that I'm drinking. And I think that is in part about how they're warehousing their product. But let's go ahead and get on past the alcohol percentage and we are jumping into the warehouse number. Now, the first letter in that is going to identify what the letter of the warehouse is in which this barrel was stored. The second letter immediately following that gives the sides of the warehouse. That's how they have it broken down at Four Roses is north, south, east, and west. It's primarily for identification, but again, you'll know some of those positions are gonna have you closer to more sunlight. Some of those are gonna have you closer to a window. Some of those are gonna have you further removed from that, maybe more in the shadows. So even though you're in a rick house, those rick houses might be positioned a little bit differently and the sides may come into play. So the first two letters you're gonna see under that warehouse number is gonna give you what the warehouse is and what side of that warehouse the barrel is identified being on. The next number you're running into is the rick number. This is gonna identify what rick this barrel was stored on. Coming immediately after a dash that's after the rick number, you're going to get the tier. The tier is going to be anywhere from one to six. Again, six tiers make up the single story warehouses for Four Roses. And there's a lot of chatter with this. When it comes to the tiers, are the higher tiers the best or the lower tier the best? When it comes to runs, how does it make a difference? And again, these are single barrel products. Not all the time is tier six gonna be the best. I feel like often tier six might have the highest alcohol percentage if that's what you're going after but again, not necessarily always the best. Some runs, most likely, but you'll hear a lot of people in the Four Roses communities talking about how there's some fours and fives of a certain run, if you will say, I might be getting ahead of myself, but 
according to the same warehouse, the same side, the same rick, but maybe a different tier. So we're putting some locations kind of close to one another, but the tier is what's making a difference. And some people will say, some of the things that are in four and five are gonna be better than the ones of us uh, than on tier six in a given run. They're all single barrels. This should be something that we expect. Last letter that's on the label is going to be the position number. And that position is gonna say, where is it kind of pulling out of that rack? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, on down the line. The first barrel listed is A, and it continues going on down. So this is the identification that is on the front of that. And from that information combined with age or the recipes, this is where people start putting together runs. This is where people start saying barrels in blank were great. Yes, it is still true. Individual barrels are individual barrels and some individual barrels will be awesome and some individual barrels will not be awesome. But there are a lot of people who will go after specific runs. I'm one of them. You've heard me talk about it in other videos. When it came to the HW55 run of OESF recipes. So this is one that came from H Warehouse, the west side. 55 was the Rick number. And then most of these came from tier five. Some were in tier four as well. And they were really enjoyable to me. I feel like we most uh, easily see this in some bottles uh, that have been released for quite some time and it's the OESO recipe and it was from warehouse M from the west side and it was from Rick 25. Now we've seen these barrels from tier six and now coming all the way down to tier two. I would say just personally it seems like the ones that have been in the higher tiers have been more favorable than the ones in the lower tiers. Not really too sure the rhyme or reason for that. The only way you can really figure that out is by taste. But I just want to get that kind of broken out there. It's not always the case that the higher the tier, the better. And I think we see that most uh, clearly in some older runs of barrels that, that are a little bit different than that. And I've had a lot of sixes that have been really, really hot and maybe need a little bit uh, of water to tame that down. I'm fine just popping up, open a bottle, drinking it and seeing whether I like it or not. Hopefully you all are as well. But for those who want to help break down, what is it exactly that it is that they're reading on these bottles? That is mainly what this video is for. But again, let me jump back to the point I'm in in the very beginning. There are people who want to collect all 10 recipes. And that, again, is in their own right to do so. But again, just like we looked at, let's say this bottle right here. This is an OBSF that's nine years old. An OBSF that's nine years old is most likely not gonna taste like an OBSF that's at 11 years old or an OBSF that's at 15 years old if they had one out there. And so I would definitely challenge people to figure out whether that's by sample swapping with somebody they may know or trying it at a local bar or store that might be close to them. When it comes to Four Roses, you probably do wanna try and get a general sense of what a recipe has to offer. Try a couple of different barrels if you're able to and figure out whether the flavor profile matches what they actually say it's supposed to represent on this tag or when I had it up here, I'll probably put it back up there again. See if it does do that and what recipes might resonate with you. Also something you can try and do if you have access is to see what age range that you might like. There's a lot of these that pop off in all different types of age ranges from seven to eight years old up into the 16 or what we saw with the Visitor Center 20 year release. So there's huge ranges here. And I would say there's just as much merit to somebody who wants to collect ages or who just, just wants to collect a certain recipe. As you all have seen from the previous videos I put on the channel, OESV was a very favorite recipe of mine. It's one that I try and go after. And there was a specific run I tried to get all the bottles from because I just liked it so much. Uh, and that could be inherent to the OESV, to the combination with the age range, or the run with the warehouse information and the Rick information there too. So I just wanted to get that out here. I wanted to put some information out. Hopefully that was helpful to you all to be able to learn how to read a Four Roses recipe and let you know that there may not be all that much differentiation between tiers one through six. There might not be all that much that you can deduce from trying all 10 recipes just for buying them all. And I say that mainly as a money saving thing. If you're gonna buy 10 bottles, just for the sake of having one for every recipe. It's a lot of money to tie up to know or to not know 
whether some of those bottles will even be profiles that you're looking for. Is it gonna be too spicy for you? Is it gonna be too fruity for you? Is it gonna be too oaky for you? Is it gonna be too herbal and quirky for you? This all might happen depending on what recipes you find out that you all are interested in. Thanks so much everyone for tuning into this video. Again, I hope it was helpful. If you wanna hear more for Rose's talk, let me know down in the comments. Again, I've heard a whole bunch of it, and so I have made it uh, a point of mine to make sure I'm always reviewing one new Single Barrel Four Roses product every single month. The folks who are tuning in on Patreon know what my, my plan is for that. Some of the higher tiers of Patreon, every time that I pop one of these bottles open, I'm gonna randomly give away five samples of that out to people just so they have an opportunity to try some of these Four Roses products and try them alongside of the reviews that I've put out to kind of talk through the bottles to see if maybe they could pick up some of the same flavor notes. Information down below for the Patreon will also be there. For those who are really, really interested in Four Roses products, again, leave me a message down below and say, I want more Four Roses. On the live stream, we talked about whether I should start a site called The Seventh Tier, which really just goes through and does a whole lot of Four Roses products. And I did poll some of my guys in one of the Four Roses groups that I'm in, hey, if I were to start this channel called The Seventh Tier, would you all join me and we could do some sample swapping and we can get some other folks who in, are into Four Roses on the channel doing some tastings with me so we could get a larger catalog of Four Roses, a channel that would be exclusive to Four Roses. And those guys said yes. So at the time of this recording, you could actually go over and look up the seventh tier on YouTube. There's nothing there yet, but I'm hoping to continue to put some information for Four Roses onto that channel as we go throughout 2022. And it'll be a channel dedicated solely to Four Roses. If you want, you can email the seventh tier at gmail.com any sort of Four Roses questions or barrels that you might want to see. Or if you have barrels you'd like to hear me review or talk about on that channel, again, shoot me an email, the seventh tier at gmail.com. Again, thanks so much as always, everyone, for tuning in. I'm sorry for the long-winded video, but it's something I thought might be helpful. If you want more content, consider tuning in to our Entry Proof Live Thursday nights on the Drew P. Whiskey channel. We're doing live talks about barrel picks. We're talking topics. We've got guests on the show. We're breaking down our barrel picks before we send them out to Patreon or open them up for you all. All sorts of things. We're doing blind tastings. All that goes down Thursday nights on Drew P. Whiskey's channel, Entry Proof Live. If you want to support what I'm doing here on the channel, if you want to support what Drew's doing, if you want to support the seventh tier, you can follow us on patreon.com slash entryproofpodcast to get all that information. Till next time, everybody. We'll see you all later.